Hello and welcome back to Vox Terra. And if you have not done so, please do subscribe and click the notification bell. Today, I want to highlight for you a super important PBS documentary called Earth Emergency. And this Earth Emergency talks about the underreported fact that we are now entering an era of what are called feedback loops climate feedback loops, meaning as we have crossed the threshold of fossil fuel burning and added so many tons now of carbon and methane into our atmosphere, it's as if Mother Nature is saying, well, you really want to heat this place up, let's heat it up then. And if people really understood this, I guarantee you they'd be a lot more eager to scale back on the era of fossil fuels. Well, the easiest feedback loop to wrap our heads around that we should all know and have emblazoned in our memory is what the loss of Arctic sea ice is doing. Well, the world's ice sheets and snowpacks and what's left of the glaciers act as the Earth's air conditioning system, reflecting heat off of our planet. And as that Arctic ice mass melts and shrinks, we are losing that great mirror. And more heat is getting absorbed into that dark ocean. And as that heat gets absorbed into that dark ocean, the ice heats further and melts further, absorbing more heat. That process is also known as Arctic amplification. Hence why the Arctic is heating up at a faster rate than the rest of the planet, or one of the reasons. Another major feedback loop we should all know about is the thawing permafrost. And all that trapped and frozen vegetation and ancient animal matter, well, as it thaws, ancient microbes are awakening, methane and carbon are being released into the atmosphere. Those are also heat-trapping greenhouse gases gases adding to our fossil fuel emissions, heating the planet further. Number three we should all know about is the weakening of the jet stream. The jet stream is a major atmospheric river that used to stay pretty much put circulating around the polar region, pinning that polar air in place, moderating the Earth's temperature. Well, as the Arctic is heating up more rapidly than the rest of the planet, we are losing that temperature differential between the north and the tropics. And those air circulation patterns relied on that push and pull from hot to cold. So now that, that pattern is getting sluggish, slowing down, and also slumping, getting out of whack. Hence why you see these cold Arctic blasts dipping deep into the southern areas they never used to. But we see all this hot southern air pouring up into the Arctic. Well, that hot southern air pouring up into the Arctic is heating the Arctic even more. Thus weakening the jet stream further and heating the the Arctic even more and heating the whole planet with it. Another feedback loop discussed in the PBS documentary is the forest die-offs and the loss of forests as what is no, what are known as a carbon sink, meaning the forests sequester all that carbon that we were, have been adding to the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels, but now they're starting to lose their ability to do that and are becoming, are giving carbon. Well, why is that happening? As the planet heats, the forests are becoming stronger stressed. More forested regions are becoming susceptible to insect infestations because those winters are not killing off those insects as they used to. More of the vegetative regions of the world in general are going from these whipsaw-like hot or flood to drought conditions and then these hot dry conditions and lead to a situation where the forests along with the insect damage they're receiving are more vulnerable to burning so worldwide wildfires have gone up so the dying forests through their decay add to the carbon as do the burning of the forests adding more carbon to the atmosphere losing their ability to sequester carbon also adding to the earth's heating that was set in motion by the excessive burning of fossil fuels. Now also related to the loss of ice is sea level rise and those warmer oceans then sort of encroach on the frozen ice sheets melt and melt them further. Hotter oceans also give up more moisture or more evaporation into the atmosphere, which makes the atmosphere in general more moisture-laden. Water vapor is also a greenhouse gas, hence trapping more heat. Now, the, the feedback loop focused on here in the video, the PBS show, wasn't really so much that, because one of the issues with increased atmospheric moisture is the variable of cloud cover and how increased or changed cloud cover is going to affect climate conditions. That's more of a wild card. 
but the link between increased heat, ocean heat, and water vapor, and, ha- and more intense tropical storms and hurricanes is well established. So, so that was what the PBS documentary focused on. Now, it also highlighted scientists, one in particular, who have been discussing feedback loops since the 1950s, as well as another scientist who cited studies going back to the early 1970s warning about feedback loops. And I'd like to point out that in an earlier video, I cited NASA showing that climate science or green, man-made greenhouse gases to the burning of fossil fuels affecting our climate. That science goes back to the late 1800s. So the main thing left out of the PBS documentary is, well, why isn't it being discussed? And for that, I would suggest you go to a website, a journalistic website called DSmog, and they specialize in exposing what they call the public relations propaganda behind climate change denial, dismissal, and also climate inaction. And it all really comes down to protecting business as usual, which is the selling of fossil fuel and fossil fuel petrochemical products. So please check out PBS's Earth Emergency. Please like and subscribe to my show and click that notification bell. And until next time, as always, peace be with you.